Hey y'all, how's everybody doing? Well, I wanted to sit down today and um, do a quick daily devotional. And I wondered, I was going to ask you guys if you want to, um, if y'all would like to do a daily devotional. I have two ideas. Um, for the rest of the year, I thought about doing a daily read. You know, like how you read something and then the past tense is that you read it. Um, that I would give y'all a scripture every day that uh, we would read together, and that's been read, and then we'll talk about it. And then, um, you know, because Jesus, um, in, in the Lord's Prayer, the famous Lord's Prayer, he didn't call it that, but it was his prayer, uh, that he uses an example of how to pray. And uh, he said, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as we forgive others. And that's something, that's something for us to think about. That's another scripture we could talk about. But anyway, um, because there's also another scripture besides the Lord's Prayer that talks to us about forgiveness and that it is conditional. Mmm, that's food for thought. If you're interested in that, comment below. Uh, but he said to, to give us this day because each day is what he wants us to focus on. And so I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and do for the rest of this year, a daily devotional called The Daily Red. And then, the beginning of the year, y'all, this is intense. I've been thinking about this, and I want to know your thoughts, because you'd have to hang with me. Um, to read the Bible in a year. So it would be called The Bible in a Year. And I would give homework assignments. Yes, I would tell you a day in advance what we're going to be reading for that evening. So it would be time, whether you've got time during the morning, the noon, or the night, whenever you can work in the reading, it would be intense. Because it's a lot of reading to read the Bible in the year. And um, especially for me, because I feel like I need to be a bit prepared to discuss it with you. And so it would be more intense for me. So it's a huge commitment. I'm praying about it. I'd like y'all to pray about it. Comment below if you would like that. Um, or if you would rather just some other kind of daily devotional because that would be something that we'd all have to commit to that's pretty heavy duty. Uh, you read about three chapters a night, or three, uh, it depends, it depends. Maybe I'll talk more about that, but it would be a lot of reading every night for me. I wouldn't have that kind of reading time in the morning, and I work during the day, so. But I can't think of a better thing to do with my time, you know? So anyway, today we are going to be um, reading in Romans 8, 31 through 39. And this is to talk to y'all about hope. And uh, there's so many scriptures about hope. Y'all know that my ministry is called Have Hope Ministries. I haven't trademarked it yet, but hope is my buzzword. And that's because we all need encouragement. We all need to have hope. Um, but anyway, this scripture, uh, Romans 8, 31 through 39, is where we'll be focused. And the, the um, scripture that is the key focus is Romans 8, 31. So if you want to uh, put me on hold and um, go there, again, it's Romans 8, 31. And um, it's going to be the, the <clears throat> excuse me, the focus scripture, okay? But we're looking at the whole area of 31 through 39. So God asks you to make your word come alive to us right now. And uh, Holy Spirit asks you to come within us and teach us and guide us, comfort us, and uh, let us fall even more in love with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so 31 through 39, I'm just going to quickly read it. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, great, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, whoops. What in the world? Oh, it is. Okay. It just, the way that it's on the page, it's a two column page. I'm like, is that the end of a sentence? No, it's the beginning one. Forgive me, y'all. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Y'all remember that. He's always in the face of the Father saying, forgive him, forgive him, forgive him. Remember me, look at me. Um, who shall separate us 
from the love of Christ shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written for your sake we face day, death all day long we are considered as sheep to be slaughtered no in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us for I'm convinced that neither death nor life Neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, I think it's really important to single out this one verse, and that is, if God be for us, who can be against us? Um, in this letter, uh, Paul is writing to the believers in Rome, and he expressed... Um, a complete confidence in God and his ability in regardless of what the circumstances are because I know some of you are going but Beth and regardless of the circumstances um, he said with boldness if God be for us who can be against us um, and that if God gave up his own son Jesus to save us then he will provide everything we need to finish this life as well and you also have to remember that Jesus, the Son, was willing to give up his life to the Father. The Holy Spirit is willing to stay behind and live inside of us until the return of Christ. Um, Paul lists all the unbearable things he was going through, by the way. So some of you may say, yeah, but you don't know what I'm dealing with. Okay. He faced troubles and hardships. Is that you? Troubles and hardship. He faced persecution for being a Christian. Famine. Not just him starving. Everybody was starving. Nakedness. That means he'd lost everything, y'all. Even his clothes, apparently. Danger and the sword, even he tells us in verse 35. He didn't imply that God's love would keep us from terrible things from happening. What he implied and what he said is that in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Though there's uncertainty in this world, y'all, God is certain. Um, God is completely knowing and lacking nothing. Nothing surprises him, and nothing can separate us from him. So it's important for us that when we're in what appears to be a hopeless situation, we need to ask ourselves a question. And I ask you, how do you typically re respond to a hopeless, dangerous frightening situation. Do you go to God? And do you say, yeah, I go to God, but I don't get anything. Or I've prayed about it, but nothing happens. Y'all, I'm not sure what you're expecting to happen, but the promise that you cling to is that in Him, you find the peace and the comfort that you need from that circumstance. You find the safety and the hope and the 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 promises from looking heavenward, looking forward, and, and um, keeping our eyes on God. It's not that he's going to say, okay, I'm not going to make anything ever go wrong for you again. I'm going to protect you from anything that could ever go wrong. He already did that in the garden, and we blew it. But he hasn't given up on us, and he hasn't given up on the life here right now. He's going to make it all things new. But our hope is actually in him in the circumstance not that he's changing the circumstance but that we're changed by him enough to handle that circumstance anything that comes our way anything that comes our way we can handle it in our own strength no we're wimps we're fragile we're weak we're broken vessels and he knows that he made us to be dependent on him and what are we supposed to do in the hopeless situation turn to christ I know you say, I have. Keep turning to him. He is the one that will give you the strength. He is the one that will give you the peace. He is the one that will work it out in you, not necessarily in the world. But he'll give you what you need until he returns. I know you want me to say, well, Beth, he'll fix everything and he'll give us a perfect situation. He did not promise us that in this world, but he does in the next. What do we get in this world? A broken, fallen world full of sin and all of the consequences of that from our human nature to nature around us, just the whole world. But he says, you can have peace. You can have comfort. You can have strength. You can even have 
joy in me and nothing can separate you from me. I hope that helps y'all today and I'll see y'all again in our next daily devotion. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!